Hi, I'm Claudia, Delta Charlie to Charlie Lima, and I'm a Hamburger radio operator from uh, Germany. And the question is, uh, why ham radio attracts you? Well, uh, ham radio attracts me because of all the different things you can do. I actually don't know a hobby with so many different facets. You can do technical things, you can be on air, you can uh, talk to, to other international uh, persons and other ham radio operators. You can also do um, ARDF finding, for example. So there are so many different facets and I think everyone will find uh, one specific task which attracts him most and uh, we can still are connected to ham radio um, all together and this is pretty cool. Hello, I am Eric. Uh, my call is Lima 36 Echo Sierra. Uh, I, do, uh, I like to do um, activities like uh, contests. Uh, I already learned more, to, can do more, and uh, I already like to uh, do piling uh, uh, centers. Okay. Oscar November 1 Golf Papa Sierra. Name is Peter. I'm from Belgium. Um, that's in between Germany and France, the country that gets uh, basically visited by all those countries all the time. Um, I got a question here for what kind of ham radio activity uh, do you like? The thing is, a lot of people underestimate um, how many activities there are in ham radio. Um, like for example, everybody thinks it's just about like talking on the radio. That well, there's like a lot more like um, Fox hunting is like a thing, um, all the technology behind it uh, for, um, for making new things work. Like if you have an idea, okay, I want this to work wirelessly, you can build it and make it work. Um, there's also a lot of people uh, learning the new technologies with um, integration with computers like software defined radio, which makes a lot of interesting new digital technologies and new signal processing so we can have um, better quality communication um, for less effort in the long run um, and that's one of the things i like about um, this uh, hobby it's basically limitless in so many ways um, another thing is you make a lot of new friends uh, you meet a lot of people uh, on frequency in real life on events like this um, and yeah it's it's fun all around. However, stress can be sometimes when a contest, when it doesn't work, but then it's the fun to make it work again. <laughs> Hope this was good good enough answer for my for the question. Hello, my name is Monty, Oscar Echo 3, Victor Victor Uniform from Austria. In my opinion, the future of amateur radio is young people. The next generation of amateur radio will be young people like us, some people from all the way from uh, small children, 12, 14 years old, to 26, 23, whatever. Uh, and we will shape the future of amateur radio with new technologies, you know, whisper made from Raspberry Pi, these kind of things. Not just the old traditional amateur radio, but also lots of new technology, lots of uh, building your own kits, uh, doing all this kind of stuff combining amateur radio with other technologies, you know, combining it with uh, smartphones, combining it, making an app, for example, this, I think, is the future of amateur radio. Okay, my name is Lars, Lima Alpha Romeo Sierra, and my call sign is Delta Lima for Alpha Papa Tango. Um, I'm uh, from Hamburg in northern Germany, and I've brought uh, an interesting uh, thing with me. It's called a new packet radio, uh, and a lot of people think uh, will remember packet radio of the old days, 9.6 boat, 9.6 kilo boat, not quite that fast in the modern days. We know all the people have smartphones, that's quite a bandwidth, lots of data is used and uh, an amateur radio, I think we've fallen a little bit behind and I think it's now time to take a step and going going to the future again, taking a step to new technologies. And here in Europe we have a really uh, interesting project, it's called Hemnet. It's like a little experimenting with internet over the ham radio frequencies. So we have our own net 
own website, our own search engine. It's like a little internet of its own to play with. And it's using um, Wi-Fi uh, hardware for really fast connections from point to point. But the problem with Wi-Fi, everybody knows if something is in the way, if I'm going inside a building, Wi-Fi isn't working anymore. So in the large towns, we have lots of high buildings, lots of obstructions. So uh, it's really hard for the end user to get to use the hemnet. And so we have developed uh, a kit to use 70 centimeters. The great uh, ways of the 70 centimeters is getting over the air. All the people know 70 centimeters from the handhelds. It's working quite good and now we are trying to use uh, it for data communications. At the moment 500 uh, kilobytes per second. It's, for the modern days it's not that much but it's quite large improvement of around 50 times what we were used with the old packet radio. So we're taking a step forward and um, I'm hoping that we can do lots of experimentation with uh, these kits and getting ham radio into the future again. Six Alpha Alpha. Uh, my name is Lena, and uh, I started uh, doing uh, the amateur radio hobby because uh, both my grandfathers were uh, hams, and and my father is also a ham. Uh, but now uh, only my father is alive, uh, and his call sign is Hot Alpha uh, Six Papa X Ray, uh, and I. I thought it was an interesting, interesting hobby, and uh, so I joined the hobby by uh, learning Morse code, and then uh, and then I started to operate in ham radio. Also. Okay, uh, I am Marcus, a Delta Lima 8 Golf mic, and uh, what attracts me into ham radio is mostly the technical side as everybody has some sort of radio device with them all the time, usually the phone or laptops using Wi-Fi or the radio in the car and all, all sorts of other radiating devices. And what interests me is um, that in amateur radio you can get behind the part. You won't build your own phone, but you're going to build your own wireless communications, try out like new technologies in a slightly different area, but still understand the basic principles that are like behind a lot of what powers uh, today's wireless world. Hello, I am Lennart, Papa Alpha 2 Lima Echo November from the Netherlands. What do I do like about ham radio? I like to do amateur satellites because it's cutting edge technology and it's always a challenge to work the satellite. And also I like 160 meters just because it's a little bit difficult to get on the air there. You need a large antenna and it's always exciting to work a far away DX station. Yeah, okay, so uh, my name is Dominic, uh, my call sign is Delta Oscar 3 India Charlie. Uh, yeah, um, so what attracts me to uh, ham radio, I, um, yeah, at the beginning I guess it was just some magical thing, you, um, yeah, have this device and you uh, speak into it and somehow it uh, comes out of the other device and I just wanted to find out how it actually works and uh, yeah uh, I always yeah I guess was kind of quite some kind of interested in how things work and so I <coughs> joined my local uh, uh, ham radio club there was some event I guess and uh, yeah so I um, yeah at the beginning I didn't find out as much as I wanted to, but yeah, it takes some time, but over the time you get some better understanding of how things work. I then got my license and when I was learning I also found out quite some stuff. Yeah, it was quite, uh, it's quite interesting to find out how things work. And I guess nowadays I'm also yeah, trying out new stuff and yeah, it's also quite interesting to get into the electronics yeah uh, 
Uh, good day. Uh, my name is Kuis uh, Zulu Romeo Six Kilo Foxtrot. I am from South Africa and I live in the city called Pretoria, which is the capital of South Africa, or one of the three capitals of South Africa. Okay. So, in our country, in South Africa, uh, any radio communication is also used to track wildlife animals in the national parks and that to make sure that we know where most of the animals are, either in groups or whatever, we would put a radio transmitter on the neck, on like a collar, on one of the necks of the animals and that, and because they stay in herds, uh, we can then track the herd of animals and that. We mostly use it for endangered species like rhinos and leopards and lions and stuff like that um, to make sure that the animals are still healthy, check up on them every now and then or if it's an animal that has been sick before um, to check that the medicine is working you can easily track it by radio direction finding and stuff like that. So yeah, that's the answer to my question. So hello from Friedrichshafen Ham Radio 2019. My name is Philipp, Delta Kilo 6 Sierra Papa uh, from Erding in uh, Germany next to Munich. And uh, I want to um, give you some answers on Rico's question here at uh, this year's uh, Friedrichshafen. So uh, what is the most important idea for making good advertisement to youth in Ham Radio? Um, yeah, we, we try to spread the word of youngsters on the air everywhere on the internet like uh, doing it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, reaching the youth where uh, they are let's say QRV um, nowadays so um, they are not reading any books or uh, magazines anymore okay they have the online PDF version we have to be present there as well uh, but the most important point for us is to do social media nowadays because they are reading it and we can share and share and share like it everywhere so everybody sees it so that's the most important point for us to get the information we have from the youngsters on the air to everybody who's anywhere yeah that's that's the point of us sharing information everywhere okay so uh, next question is uh, how to make a good promotion to spread youngsters on the air uh, the idea of it so we have a key phrase with uh, yes there's youth in ham radio at the international amateur radio union and uh, we uh, try to um, spread the word everywhere so we have a facebook channel um, at ham yota we have a twitter channel also at ham yota and an instagram channel as well with ham yota um, official so uh, we are trying to keep all the youngsters informed about our activities uh, let it be the youngsters contesting program let it be the uh, December Yota month activities or even the summer camps, the sub-regional camps we just introduced last year. We have every information you need um, to get new youngsters involved into ham radio on our social media channels. And it's just a pleasure to work with all those youngsters because the PR team we have here at the Yota, uh, we are all under 26 years old. So it's just great to see all those guys active and uh, yeah. We like it to be part of the youngsters on the air here at the International Amateur Radio Union. So, a uh, short uh, message for the youngsters in Japan. Keep going with the great, great, awesome work you do there. Um, I followed your, uh, your videos from the YCP. Uh, it was incredible. Um, also, the, the talk from Rico this year at the Friedrichshafen Ham Radio. It was awesome. What you do there, keep going, keep going and uh, yeah. Great work there in Japan. Okay, yeah, Ham Camp already exists for uh, several years. I think I'm the third or fourth organizer. And it's especially for youngsters who have uh, not enough money um, to go to a hotel or the, the camping area. And um, yeah, we offer it for people from around uh, 10 or 12 years up to 30 something. It's in an empty mess hall. And some people say it looks like a refugee camp because it's built of lightweight walls and uh, camping beds. But it's a great opportunity to stay directly on the camping ground and uh, meet lots of young people there. 
Um, this year we had almost 120 participants. Of course, uh, some cancel in the last minute because of exams. It's exam time in, in for example, in Germany and in Italy. And um, yeah, I'm very happy that we were almost fully booked uh, the second time now. And um, yeah, I think that uh, next year we have to um, enlarge, we have to increase the capacity. I already talked to the fair company and um, we think that we can have 150 beds next time. So um, a possibility to, for 150 youngsters to come here and uh, enjoy ham radio. And the basic and important idea, yeah, to to have space for for young people and um, that we do not offer only the beds, but um, that you can do something in your free time in the evening. This year we had this uh, tinkering area and uh, we also tried to offer uh, a room for lectures. This year nobody wants to hold a lecture, but we will do it next year. So we try to make it as comfortable as and interesting as possible. And um, yeah, as, as cheap as possible, of course. Yeah. It's, it's just the infrastructure and the possibilities and uh, the youngsters bring something. For example, we had this this uh, speed limit uh, checker, this uh, which took photos if you're too fast with the with the inliners or with the um, small cars. This was also built by youngsters. They had the idea last year, and uh, yeah, now we have it, and um, we have some. We have a data server that collects all the photos, and we have uh, this Wi-Fi uh, or on Wi-Fi. This all these are all projects brought by the participants. Yeah, um, I know there's uh, also a ham fair in in Japan, Tokyo ham fair. Tokyo ham fair. Maybe you can set up uh, a thing that's similar to ham camp to uh, make it possible for young people to visit ham fair. And of course, we will be honored if uh, some more youngsters from Japan will visit our ham camp here in Germany. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Gerd. No problem. Konnichiwa, hello. I am Lisa, Papa Alpha to Lima Shera. I'm from the Netherlands. And at the moment, I am the chair of the youth working group of the International Amateur Radio Union Region 1, uh, which contains uh, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Northern Asia. At this moment we are very active with the Youngsters on the Air program in Region 1. And I would like to say a special word to the Japanese young hams and everyone involved in Yota Japan. First of all, uh, Yota Japan started in 2017 uh, after uh, Riku Saya visiting uh, Yota in the United Kingdom. This was the start. And after that already many things are happening, uh, youth call testing programs, uh, the interviewing at the radios, uh, a great job is already being done. And I hope this continues and I believe that it will continue. And I would like to ask all young hams in Japan to take part in these activities. Don't be shy, just go there and take part. You will make many, many new friends. It's a very friendly and social activity to take part uh, and make uh, amateur radio uh, in this. So uh, I would uh, like to say thank you also for everyone in Japan doing this and organizing this. There are many people working hard and uh, feel free to join also uh, in Japan. Thank you. Thank you.